Hey, lovers, can I hand you that you can, by manipulating, create the widest variety of interesting things. And that's kind of an interesting caveat because uh, it's easy to build a generative system that you know fills your screen with static, and every setting up of the office is going to be a different static screen, and they're all different. But they're not interestingly different. And so a lot of what we do in engineering these systems is try to constrain the, the output space to stuff that, you know, depending on the format, is something that's aesthetically or functionally interesting. Um, but give you the simple, almost somewhat intuitive mapping too, as to what this lever is causing. As you move this lever back and forth, you want to see, you know, some obvious kind of connection to the output between like the genotype and the phenotype. So, and that's something that's it's not easily engineered and it's really more almost of a discovery process, which again is why we spend so much time prototyping. And even though we're going to throw away, you know, 190 of those 200 prototypes, that was extremely valuable. So you, at the very beginning of your talk, you mentioned education. Yeah. And your experience in the education system uh, before you were sixth grade and after sixth grade in Montessori, you said, yeah. um, how do you see tools like this playing a role in, in what we consider formal education uh, for young people? It's tricky to roll the standardized testing because in games, the type of things that they teach uh, tend to, by their very nature, resist standardized testing. You know, any game, in essence, is... What's that? Maybe that's a good thing. Yeah, I think it is, actually. Uh, you know, every game that you buy really is a problem. If you're selling something that's somebody paying you fifty dollars to give them a problem, you know, you say, here's all this problem. Uh, hopefully the problem is interesting and they can apply some creativity to it. But really games are about problem solving. Whether it's, you know, shooting all the guys in that army or building a thriving civilization, uh, the player then, you know, the question is kind of like, how big is the solution space? You know, most games have a very constrained, very rigid solution space where there's one way to rescue the princess. Uh, I'm much more interested in games that have a very wide solution space, so there's you know a million ways to do it correctly, and that way the players are being much more creative by where they fall in that solution space, and drives me forward kind of more emergent systems that can generate a larger solution space. But uh, it's also really interesting when you put your typical 12-year-old in front of something like this that has a million knobs and buttons and all these possibilities. They just start banging buttons, observing what's happening, and they intuit the rules of the system in the simulation. It's amazing how quickly a 12 year old can build a mill model from a complex simulation just by sitting there pressing buttons on their Xbox. Uh, typically, you hand that to an adult over 40, and they want to read the manual. They want to know what to do. They want to know if they don't want to fail. You know? And kids embrace failure based learning, adults avoid it like the plague. But uh, in essence, kids are practicing the scientific method, right? They sit there, they experiment, they look at the result, they try to build a model in their head, they hypothesize about what the online model is, test that, and you experiment, and continually refine that internal model. And so kids are very naturally born toward the scientific instinct, and games are probably the one environment where they really get to practice and refine the scientific method, you know, using the scientific method. And I think, you know, in our culture, you know, both parents and a lot of educators don't recognize that as such, you know. They just kind of, games are about the same as drugs, you know. Uh, all my kids playing games, too bad, he's addicted, you know. But, yeah, and that's an unfortunate kind of cultural position that we're in right now.